morning. We go live here, nine o'clock on Saturday, the 4th of July. Uh, today's class is gonna be an anti-gravity class. So um, all you need is your mat or a place to practice. Um, forgive me if I take a minute here to just make sure the camera angles are good so you can see me when I'm standing <clears throat> as well as when I'm seated so that my head's not too cut off. So I think that's probably pretty good. You can always tell by the top of my door there. So um, if you have a blanket, it would be great to have a blanket today. Um, if not, you could possibly use blocks. And if you like to practice with blocks, feel free to bring them as well. Um, let me show you how we're gonna fold the blanket just to get that out of the way. It doesn't have to be a yoga blanket. So any blanket you have in the house, um, fold it in half, make sure it's lined up really well. And then you're gonna fold it in half again. Again, get all the wrinkles out. You'll be glad that you did later. And then fold it in half again. So you get something like this. And then finally fold it in half again. So you're gonna have this long rectangle, um, sort of like the size of a bolster. We're gonna use it for two Postures, you might also want it for your knees later. Uh, we're gonna actually start in a restorative posture and we're gonna end in a restorative posture. So um, as we get started, or before we get started, the purpose of this class is gonna be, um, you know, our whole lives, we live with gravity on us, right? And, and as we age, we, we get older, we tend to get this rounding forward. And there's at least part of the day. Um, we have our cell phones. We're always looking down. We tend to get the cell phone neck. And even with the best of intentions, I know that I found myself working from home, uh, sitting in front of my computer. My computer was on the coffee table. It was lifted up with books. And I was watching this really great performance. Um, watching and watching and watching. It was like an hour and a half long. And I caught myself starting to do this right? As I was getting a little closer and closer to the, and I'm like, oh my God, how long have I been sitting like this? So fortunately, you know, I became conscious of that. And that's part of what yoga does, right? We connect with the body, connect with the mind and become more of our breath, of our posture, and hopefully of how we're living in the world and how we're acting and reacting to others. So for today, uh, many of you who know me know that I've spent a lot of my yoga career working with the elderly. I've done a lot of classes in assisted living facilities. Um, and a lot of what we work on is this lifting from the sternum and the softening down of the shoulders and releasing tension from the neck and the shoulders. So just becoming more aware of sitting upright. And we'll have an opportunity to sit upright in just a little bit. But today we're going to start on our back in a restorative fish pose. So this blanket that we just folded really nicely is gonna go under the back of your ribs. And so for ladies, it's a little easier to find because it's right around where your bra strap goes around the back. That's where it's gonna start. And then as you lay on it, again, everybody's torso size is a little bit different, but you want your shoulders to be on the mat. So if your shoulders are on the blanket and your head's coming down, it's not in the right spot. You want to lift up, shift back, and let the shoulders engage. And guys, so the same thing. Think about the lower ribs supporting, being supported by the blanket. And then the easiest thing for the arms is to take a cactus pose with the arms. Because if the arms are at your side, the blanket's gonna be in the way. You could also extend them out, but that might be a little too much on the shoulders. You'll notice that's a pretty open, um, externally rotated shoulder. So maybe just taking the arms in a cactus pose. And then if you're okay with it, go ahead and extend your legs, unless you feel pressure on your lower back. In that case, you can keep the knees bent. But we're gonna start here in this restorative fish pose, just a gentle 
fish pose. So there's many, many other ways we could do this posture. But this one is gentle. We're just starting. I'm assuming that you all are starting your day. It's 9 o'clock here, Eastern Time. And so we just want to kind of gently let the body know where we're going today with this opening. So start to relax into it. Feel all the points of contact between your back body and the floor. The backs of your heels. Perhaps the backs of the knees or the thighs. And if the hamstrings are tight, they might not quite be touching the backs of the knees. The backs of your hips. Feel the slight arch in your back. And feel the part of you that is touching the blanket. Your shoulders on. the backs of your hands, the back of your head. If you feel okay with closing your eyes, you could go ahead and close your eyes. That helps us just turn our gaze inward and become more present and more aware of what we're feeling in our bodies. Notice the left side and the right side of your body. And see if you notice any discrepancies of how the body's lying on the floor. Does one side feel heavier than the other? Does one foot flop out more than the other? Does one shoulder rest more deeply than the other? Just noticing and cultivating an awareness of this. And then begin to notice your breath. Breathing into your belly. As you exhale, soften your belly. Breathing into your belly, feel the breath rise into the ribs and into the chest, all the way up to the collarbones. Exhale and soften. As you breathe into belly, ribs, and tail to the crown, and exhale and soften. You might also notice if any place feels stuck in the spine. Just take a few more breaths here, finding a rhythm for your breath. Not trying to do any particular pranayama this morning, but just matching the length of the inhale to the length of the exhale the length of the exhale to the length of the inhale. Breathing in and out through your nose. Take one more breath here. Feeling the fullness of the ribs as they expand. Exhale and soften, feel the back body rest. 
And then to come out of this, we're actually going to come back into this posture. We're just going to remove the blanket. So bend your knees, bring your feet to the floor. Roll to your side. Just lift yourself up enough to move that blanket out and just set it aside. And come back down onto your back. And if you can, <clears throat> it's okay with the lower back. Go ahead and extend the legs. If not, keep the knees bent. We're going to take the arms out to the side as if we were going to come back into. But keep the fingertips up to the sky. And notice if your elbows are in line with your shoulders. So you don't want them way up here where the shoulders are hiked up, and you don't want them below the shoulders, right? Pretty much in line with the shoulder. Fingertips up to the sky. Now you're gonna turn your palms out. So the pinky is um, towards the back of the room. And then become aware of your back body. If you want, you can close your eyes. Press down to the backs of your shoulder blades. Feel them on the floor. You're gonna to start to take the arms over your head so that the pinkies come down and maybe they touch the floor, maybe they don't. Keep your gaze up to the ceiling. So I know you might wanna turn, look at the um, video if you're not sure what I'm doing, but then bring your gaze back up to the ceiling and return the hands back up. So we're gonna do this a few times. You're just gonna take the hands overhead, keep the elbows down, keep the shoulder blades down and let the pinkies touch the floor and then bring them back to the starting position. Take the arms overhead, keeping the elbows bent, and come back to starting pose. A couple more times. This may not feel like much of anything at all, but if you're tight in the shoulders and the upper back, you might feel a little opening here. You might feel the shoulders working a little bit. And so the next time the pinkies come down to the floor or near the floor, you're gonna leave them there. You're gonna to start to bring your fingers together, interlace your fingers, turn the palms to face the back of the back wall, whatever's behind you in your yoga space, and reach the arms overhead, but keep the shoulder blades down. So notice what you're feeling, the back of the shoulders pressing down as you reach the arm. Imagine standing in mountain pose. So a lot of times we do this postures when we're standing, but keep the shoulders, the backs of the blades pressing down to the floor. So you're actually drawing the lower ribs in. And a lot of times you'll hear that um, suggestion when you're standing, draw the lower ribs in. Breathe, take a couple breaths here. Feel all the muscles engaged here. How much work this takes even though we're lying down. One more breath. And then uh, release the arms. Go ahead and roll to one side using your hands. We're gonna come up to sit. So finding a comfortable seat if you'd like, you can sit on your folded blanket. I'm not gonna do that right now myself. Um, you can sit cross-legged or you could be kneeling with a block in your pose. <clears throat> but find a nice tall spine. So feel your sits bones. You could even be seated in a chair. Feel your sits bones down on the ground or the chair. Relax the shoulders back and down. Take a deep breath in. Start to shrug those shoulders up to your ears and exhale. <sighs> Inhale, you can even press down to the legs and shrug the shoulders up to the ears. And exhale, release. A couple more times like that. One more. And then let's go ahead and just get a little stretch here in the forearms. You're going to take your fingertips down to the floor and start to lean forward to stretch the wrists and the forearms. You might even feel the stretch in all of the fingers. So 
Some of you, the heel of the hand might come down to the floor and some of you may not, that's okay. Mm, feels good. Can be intense. And then let's go ahead and just release that and circle your wrist a little bit if you want, shake it out. And then bringing the hands together in front of the heart. Thumbs to the sternum. Lift the heart, lift the sternum. Feel that length in your spine. And then go ahead and interlace the hands again and press out, reach all the way up, just like we did on the floor. Draw the lower ribs in and exhale the hands down to the top of the head. Inhale to press up. Reach, maybe reach one side a little longer than the other and exhale down. Inhale to press up. Exhale down. One more. And exhale the arms out to the side. We're gonna do this little twisty thing as if you were twisting a doorknob or opening a doorknob. One palm goes up, one palm down. So do that little opposite, it makes the brain have to think a little bit. Twisting through the shoulders. And then go ahead and bring your fingertips to your shoulders. We're gonna circle the elbows, forward up, back and down. Adding the breath, inhaling up. And exhaling down. Circling the shoulders, releasing tension there. And reverse direction. And elbows release down, keep the fingertips to the shoulders, sitting up nice and tall. We're just gonna take a little twist side to side. And if you wanna add the breath, there's a Kriya that goes with this. You can inhale to the left through, the, through your nose and exhale to the right, like little sniffs. Four more. And come back to center, release the arms. Bring the palms back to the, your heart center. Take a deep breath in this time. We're gonna send the fingertips up to the sky. You can look up if you like, adding a little neck stretch here. And exhale the arms down, bring the chin to the chest. Palms back to center. Inhale up, a couple of sun breaths here. And exhale down. Inhale up. And exhale down, one more time. And exhale down, leave your left fingertips down. You're gonna sweep the right arm over your ear. You can bend your left elbow in toward your waist. Try to keep your right hip down, anchored down. So don't let this hip lift up as you reach the arm over your ear. A nice side stretch here. And keep the chest open. So notice if you're rounding forward, right, we want to open up. If it feels okay with your neck, you could look up. Or you can look down if that feels better. We're just straight forward. Maybe you find a little more length, get a little bit longer. And press down with this bottom hand to bring you back to center. The other hand's going to come walk out to the floor and sweep the left arm over your ear. Bend that right elbow in your hand. And try to keep that left hip down, rooted downward. Big breath. Keep the chest open, looking up to the sky or forward or down. Breathe, getting a little bit longer. Inhale to come all the way up, sweep the arms overhead. And exhale and twist now to your left. Take the right hand outside the left thigh, left hand behind you, sit up nice and tall. Exhale, draw the belly towards the spine. This is my buddy, Junior. He likes to practice with me. Inhale, 
Inhale, arms overhead, come back to center and exhale to the other side. Right hand behind you, left hand outside of the right thigh. Sit up nice and tall, feel your sits bones on the earth. Exhale, draw the belly towards the spine. Breathe, deep breath. Exhale, release back to center. Release the legs. Let's actually take the feet out um, wider than the mat or wider than hip width apart. And we're just going to let the knees fall side to side. So wake up those hips a little bit. And then we're going to come back to center and straighten the legs out into a nice wide V. Feel those sits bones down on the earth. You can take the hands behind you and again, lift up from the sternum. Breathe. The sun is shining today. It's going to be beautiful. Again, deep breath, lifting the sternum. As you exhale, fold forward any amount. So early in the practice, the hamstrings might be tight. Don't have to go far. Just feel that stretch in the backs of the legs. Give the legs a little wake up call. And come back to center. So continue with the upper body. We're gonna take the right hand down behind the leg and as you exhale, sweep the left arm towards your toes. You don't have to touch the toes. And come back. So depending on the length of your torso and your arms. And then just switch. So we're gonna circle the arms toward the fingers towards the toes, and then plant the other hand, one hand down as you sweep the others for support. So left arm circles, right arm circles. Nice big shoulder opener. As we sweep across, you're getting a little twist in there. It's one of my favorite morning uh, stretches or exercises. Move with the breath, exhale as you reach forward. And inhale as you reach up. And we'll do one more time each side. And bring the feet together. Or not together, but hip width apart. Knees bent, hands on the floor, fingertips forward. So the wrists are pretty much under your shoulders. The elbows are bent. Lift up from the sternum again. And maybe you're just going to stay here and lift the sternum. If you can, try pressing down through the feet. See if you can lift the hips up. Breathe. <sighs> and stay there. Take another breath in. And exhale the hips down. Pause. We're going to do that again. So as you feel ready, you're going to press down through the hands and the feet. And inhale and lift the breath. <sighs> and exhale it back down. Bring the soles of your feet together, uh, heels in line with the groin, but make a little space here. So we're not trying to bring them in like Baddha Konasana, we're making a larger diamond shape here. Sitting up nice and tall. And so from here, we're going to do our, our cat-cow movements. Be gentle with the spine, especially if you have any issues with osteoporosis or osteopenia. Think more about just lifting from the sternum, and as you exhale, you're just going to draw your belly in. So you're not going to put a lot of pressure on your vertebrae. Those of you with a healthy spine, you can do a larger movement, inhaling, lifting the sternum, and exhaling, letting it round a little bit as you draw the belly in. Inhale and lift, and exhale and round. One more, and return to neutral. We're gonna go ahead and transition down onto our bellies. So coming onto your belly, hands are gonna be under your shoulders and bring your forehead down. If that's not comfortable, you can always turn your head to the side. Um, we're, gonna, we're gonna do a couple of cobra uh, postures in a moment. So hands underneath the shoulders, 
Feet are closed together, the, the toes are untucked. So not like this, but untuck your toes. Feel your pubic bone on the ground. Keep your elbows in real close. So they're not here, they're right next to your body. And then roll your shoulders back and down away from the ears. Notice how as you do that, you already start to lift up a little bit. Just a little baby cobra. We're not trying to even press the hands down yet. In fact, take your hands off the floor. Keep the elbows in, lift up, breathe. Exhale back down. You can rest your forehead or turn your head to the side. And then again, roll the shoulders away from the ears. Inhale, lift up, head, chest, shoulders. This time, keep the hands down, press down a little bit. See if you can get a little more lift. Look forward. Don't take your head way back. Keep the neck in line with your spine. Exhale, back down. So we'll do that two more times. Inhale, lift up, press down with the hands. Come into a, a cobra or a baby cobra. It's fine if you're a little lower. Right, we're just working on opening up the heart here, the chest, bring it back down as you exhale. One more time. And at this time, exhale back down. You can rest if you want. You can stack your hands, rest your forehead, wiggle the hips side to side. And then from here, hands under your shoulders. One more time, elbows in. We're going to lift up through cobra, but draw your belly in, coming through a table pose. Walk the hands back a little bit so your wrists are under your shoulders. Tuck your toes and lift your hips up into downward facing dog. Push the floor away, feet are hip width apart. Breathe, lift those hips up, sink the heels down. First nice stretch of the back of the legs, other than our, our seated posture earlier. And then we're going to inhale forward to plank pose. So I had a really short dog there. i got to walk my hands forward. Wrists under the shoulders. If this is too much, bring the knees down to the table. And then we're going to exhale back to downward facing dog. So if you're in table, tuck your toes, lift your knees up. You can do a bend. If you stayed in plank, we're going to shift forward between blank, pl blank, plank, and downward facing dog. Inhaling forward. Exhale and draw the belly in, lift the hips up and back. Otherwise, you can knees down, bend knee downward facing dog. You can totally be moving back from here. You're working on that core, drawing the core, the belly in. And go ahead, shift forward one more time. This time, bring the knees down, slowly lower all the way back down to our starting position. Untuck the toes. Bring the forearms forward this time. Coming to Sphinx Pose, elbows under the shoulders. Inhale and look forward. Just feel the stretch in your spine. As you exhale, start to draw your back hips off of the floor. And then start to lower thighs, hips, belly. Inhale, look forward. As you exhale, draw the belly and lift the hips. Maybe tuck the toes and come into forearm plank. And lowering knees, thighs. Hips, untuck the toes, look forward one last time. We're going to exhale, draw the belly up. You might be staying here today, or you might be in your forearm plank. See if you can hold for three breaths. Try not to drop your head down. So looking towards the front of your mat. And then slowly come all the way back down. You can rest one more time, stacking your hands, wiggling those hips side to side. As you're ready, hands back under the shoulders. We're going to come up the same way, elbows in. Inhale into cobra. Tuck your toes. Come to downward facing dog. If you... This time we're going to come into a lunge. So right foot forward, left foot back, left knee down. Start to come all the way up into your low lunge. You can bring the hands to the front thigh, to ground. Pressing down, 
through the back shin. And bring your knee behind the ankle a little bit so you're not forward over the toes. We want to give ourselves some space to move back and forth. Inhale the arms to the sky. Lift your sternum. And exhale, we're going to circle down as we shift forward. Inhale, lift up. Press through that back shin. Exhale, forward. One more time. Inhale, lift up. Maybe bring the left hand to the back of the thigh and reach to the sky. And exhale, hands come down. Tuck the back toe. Lift that knee up. And step back to downward facing dog. So anytime I say down dog, if you want to be in table, that's totally fine. From here, we're going to go ahead and step the left foot forward. Right knee is going to come down. Find a low lunge on the other side. Once you get there, bring the hands up onto the thigh. Make sure the knee is a little behind the ankle today because we're going to move back and forth. And then inhale the arms to the sky. Exhale down, inhale up, exhale, circle down, shift the hips forward, inhale, press down to that back shin, exhale forward. Last one. As you inhale up, maybe bring the right arm down, lift the left hand to the sky. Exhale, both hands down, tuck the back toes, feel that nice stretch in the front of the right leg. As you're ready, step forward. So we're in a forward fold. When you get there, inhale and lift up halfway. Lengthen your spine. As you exhale. Feel the length in the back of the legs. Totally fine for the knees to be bent here. But start to imagine as you inhale, lifting those hip points up to the sky. And exhale. Bring the arms out to the sides. Press down through your feet. Bend your knees and come up with a flat back. Inhale to the sky. Exhale, hands to the heart. Breathe. So from here, make sure you're in your mountain pose. Your feet are hip width apart. Arms to the sides. <clears throat> Imagine pressing inner ankles to the outer ankles, lifting from the sternum. Chin parallel to the floor. We're going to come to the posture we did on the floor earlier, so interlacing. So breathing in, face the camera here. Exhale over to your left. Make space in the side body. Inhale to the center and exhale to the other side. Inhale to the center and exhale the arms back to your heart, hands to your heart. Breathe in, breathe out. It's definitely starting to get warm here. Go ahead and interlace your hands behind your back and squeeze the elbows towards each other, opening the front chest. Big breath in. As you exhale, we're going to hinge forward from the hips. You can totally bend your knees as needed. Some of you might bring the arms back behind the head. Some of you might be a little closer to the tailbone. Breathe. You could also do this posture seated in a chair. Lift your toes while you're in this pose. Those of you with the fallen arches like me. And then release the hands down to the mat. Inhale, lift up halfway, lengthen your spine. Take your hands to your shins or fingertips to the floor or to blocks. Exhale, bend your knees, reach forward, chair pose, and press down through your feet. Inhale to rise. Exhale, hands to your heart. Breathe in, breathe out. So from here, we're going to do a few standing poses. We'll start, um, just thinking I'm not facing you. I'm going to turn around. We're going to step the right foot back. So stepping right foot back, ooh, my mat's slippery for some reason. Must be sweating already. Find a high lunge. So the heel is up in high lunge. Feel that stretch in the front of the leg. So releasing here through the iliopsoas and reach the arms up to the sky. Maybe bringing the palms to touch. 
As you exhale, reach the right arm forward, left arm back. Take a little twist. So I'm sorry, I'm facing away from you. We're going to change that in a minute. And then inhale back to the sky. Exhale, twist to the other side. So bring your right hand down to your thigh. Inhale, the left arm up. Breathe. And then exhale. Go ahead and open that back foot up. So we come into warrior two. So toes pointing out. Depending on your hips, maybe the toes point forward a little bit. So find what feels comfortable in your hips here. Keeping the front knee in line with the ankle. And then taking the arms down in front of you. Cross in front. Inhale up to the sky and exhale. Find warrior two. Breathe. Keeping the tummy engaged. We're going to... Draw the, left, draw the right elbow in with your left hand, coming into this half archer pose. Breathe. If you would like, you can drop the left arm down and see if you can clasp behind your back. If not, no worries. You could use a strap here. I didn't say to get one. You can always just stay right here. Maybe bending a little more deeply. Keep the belly firm. Inhale the arms straight up, and then take the right arm down, left arm over your ear, reverse warrior. Exhale through center, bringing the forearm to the thigh. We're gonna sweep that right arm down and up and reach to the right side of the body. So from here, we're in this version of side angle pose. Pressing down here a little bit to give yourself some lift, opening the chest. So we're not curling back down to the floor. We're going to find that openness. Maybe take that top arm behind you and see if you can find your left hip with the right fingertips behind you, opening up to the sky. Those of you that want to go deeper, you certainly could bring the left hand down or even come into a bind. But those are options. If you're here today, that's totally fine. Breathe. Be where you are. If you like, you can actually um, find some length here in the right side of the neck. Tuck your chin slightly and get a little stretch in the neck here. So I'm kind of letting my head hang a little bit, but I'm keeping the neck engaged by tucking the chin. So I'm not just caving into my shoulder. You'll feel the stretch in the back of your neck. And then take that arm back up. Inhale, come all the way back up to warrior two. Bring the hands to touch. Exhale, hands to your heart, and turn the back heel up. And I'm going to turn around my mat because I'm going to do the left side. You can stay where you are. Take a breath in mountain pose. We're going to step that left foot back, finding a high lunge. Keeping the knee in line with your ankle. Inhale the arms to the sky. Breathe. Maybe the hands touch, maybe not. They can be straight up. As you exhale, start to take that twist. Left arm forward, right arm back. Keep pressing through the ball of the back foot. Inhale back to center. And then exhale, taking the left hand to the top of the thigh. Reach the right arm up. Inhale here. Exhale, release. Start to turn the back heel down. The toes can, it can be a little more on an angle or toes opening out depending on your hips. Watch that front knee stays in line with your ankle and then let's circle the arms down and up. To find warrior two, soften through the shoulders, draw the belly in. If you need to, you might take the right foot over a little bit more. Find your warrior. Inhale the arms to the sky, bend that left elbow, pat yourself on the back, and take the right hand to draw the elbow towards the midline. And then from here, if you want to take a clasp, you can drop the right arm down, find the other fingertips of your left hand, or just stay here, it's fine. 
Inhale, arms up and exhale back to warrior two. Take, slide the left arm down and inhale, right arm over your ear, come into that reverse stretch. Reverse warrior. Left arm down and up, finding a side angle pose. So opening the chest towards the side. Pressing down a little bit through your forearm. Maybe taking that hand behind you, reaching for your hip, back of the hand to the hip. If you want to come to the floor or into the bind, feel free to do that as well. I'm going to stay here today. And then relaxing your head a little bit, tuck your chin towards your chest if you want that neck stretch. Breathe, belly engage. And then inhale that arm straight up to the sky and use that to pull you back up to warrior two. Inhale the arms overhead, exhale the hands to the heart, turn the back heel up, find high lunge, find your balance, and go ahead and step the foot forward. Walk it out. So we're going to come back to the right leg stepping back. I'm, going to, I'm moving back and forth just so I don't have my back to you. So you can see the side we're working on. We're going to step the right foot back again. This time, not quite back, as, not, maybe not quite as far. Bring the heel down. We're going to find warrior one. So again, make sure that you're not putting pressure on the front knee. You want the knee in line, pretty much in line with the ankle, or at least stabilized by the shin. And then bringing your ribs forward to face front. Be mindful of this right hip. You might be sort of in a warrior one and a half, or you might be more forward. You might feel a stretch here in the inseam of the leg. And then we're going to inhale the arms up to the sky. And then bring the thumbs behind you to the occipital bridge. And inhale, lift the sternum, elbows up towards the chest. Pressing through that back foot. And then inhale, arms to the sky. Exhale and reach forward, hinge from your hips. Press down through that front foot. Inhale, lift up, a little bit of core work here. Exhale, hinge forward. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, hinge forward. Inhale, lift. And exhale, hinge forward. Inhale, lift up, back to your warrior one. Go ahead and bend the elbows, find that cactus pose again, and through the chest, shine the heart forward. So this is one of my favorite postures, and I don't think you can see it unless I move the camera, but if you have a doorway, I have one on either side here, that you can take your forearms to the door frame. So you come to the door frame and you step forward and you find that warrior one, it really helps with the posture and the shoulders. I do that several times a day, just taking a break from your work, if you work at a desk, if you work in an office, and coming to the door frame and bringing the forearms right to the, to the frame and stepping back. I'm not really in the right position here. And lifting up. So we're going to imagine that door frame here. And open from the sternum, from the heart. Breathe out. I know we've been here for a while, so go ahead and release the arms. Straighten the front leg. Shorten your stance a little bit. The hips are forward. And then go ahead and grabbing the forearms or your wrists, whatever you can take. You could also have a strap here. Grabbing onto a strap. Inhale, lift your sternum and exhale, hinge. Finding... Pyramid pose, right? Just an exhale, hinging forward. Breathe, tucking the chin slightly. So make sure you're not jutting the chin out here. Lifting the kneecap with your quads, engaging those quadriceps. Inhale to come all the way up. Release those hands. Step the back foot forward. 
Take a rest here in mountain pose. I'm just going to turn to the other side. So as you're ready, we'll step, go ahead and step that left foot back. A little bit shorter stance than the lunge. We're going to leave the heel down this time. Shifting the ribs forward, not shifting, but turning the ribs forward, hips are forward. And inhaling the arms to the sky, bringing the palms together, maybe taking the thumbs to the back of your head, to the occiput. Inhale, lift the elbows to the sky. Feel all that openness in the front body. Breathe. One more breath and exhale, release the arms. Inhale to lift up to the sky. And then this time as we exhale, we're gonna hinge forward, bring the arms back. So keep pressing down to that front foot. Inhale, lift up, press to the back foot. As you exhale forward and press to the front foot as you inhale up. A little bit of core work, keep the legs strong. Last one. And you're opening here like a goalpost or cactus. Keep the belly firm. Engage those elbows as you open up. So there's a um, active, actively opening here. Because if you're pressing against that imaginary door frame. Sorry to have disturbed you, my friend. And then release the arms down. Go ahead, straighten the front leg. Shorten your stance a little bit. Grabbing onto the forearms or the wrist or your strap. Inhale, lift through the sternum and exhale. Start to hinge forward. Make sure you're engaging this quadricep to lift the kneecap so you're not hyperextending the knee or locking the knee. Breathe, and just allow that hamstring to stretch while opening from the chest. And then go ahead and inhale, come all the way back up, push the arms, exhale into warrior two, hands to the heart, step the back foot forward and march it out a little bit. Shimmy it out. Breathe and notice. And then relaxing the arms down. We're going to actually take the heels of the hands right to the back of the pelvis here. Draw the elbows in. Feet are still in mountain pose, hip width apart. Inhale and lift the sternum to the sky. It's coming into this little bit of a back bend. So be mindful of your neck. If it, you don't have to go way back, you can. And release and go ahead and exhale into a forward fold. Relax your head. Maybe shake it out if the neck feels a little bit tighter toast. Let the head hang. If you want to come into a rag doll here, grab the elbows, you can. Just let go of tension in the neck and the shoulders. Take a deep breath in and anything bothering you or you're weak, anything that happened this week, just exhale. Let it drip down from the shoulders and the head and back into the earth. And then from here, we're going to go ahead and bend the knees, come all the way back down. Hands to our sides, feet hip width apart. Let's take that little lift one more time. We're going to inhale, pressing down, lift the sternum. If you can, lift the hips up to the sky. Breathe. And exhale back down. You can try that again. Or if you want, we can straighten the legs. Again, the wrists are pretty much under the shoulder here, bending the knees, or bending the knees, bending the elbows in. Lift from the sternum. Exhale. 
On your next inhale, you're going to press out and see if you can lift up into this reverse plank. Breathe. Fighting gravity. So your feet might touch the floor, mine don't. Not quite. Exhale the hips back down and bend your knees in. Just go ahead and give yourself a little hug. Whew. Breathe. So we're going to transition now to all fours. So just turning over the other side of the body. Wrists are hip width or shoulder width, just as we did in our forward fold. The hips up and back. And then as you go ahead and exhale it out, if I didn't say that already, inhale forward to your plank pose. Remember, if you want, you can keep the knees down. So from here, Walk the hands forward a little bit. So um, we're going to have the left wrist just a little bit ahead of where the shoulder is. And what I just did, if you want to keep the knee down, you can keep that left knee down. Take the right foot. You're going to seal it down and just reach the right arm up. So you're in this sort of a half or a um, side plank. Or from your plank pose, go ahead and roll onto the outside of the left foot, you can step the right foot behind you and reach up, or you can step it in front of you, lift these hips up, 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 anti-gravity, reach to the sky. You can also, of course, stack the legs. So I've given you three versions there. Knee down, turn the uh, right foot down, seal the foot, lift up. You can feel a little stretch here in this posture. And of course, come out of it when you're ready to or you can come into this version, or this version, or this version, or tree pose. Come out when you're ready. Exhale, bring the knees down. Go ahead and shift back into a child's pose and rest for a moment. Breathe. Maybe notice a difference in size. And then as you're ready, walk yourself back up. Come back to downward facing dog. Turn around the other way so that you can see me. Downward facing dog, inhale forward to your plank. Take that right hand a little bit in front of the shoulder. You're gonna turn onto the outside edge of the right foot and inhale up into the side plank. Or step the foot behind you, or you can. Press down the front, lift the hips up. The other version is to bring the right knee down, seal the outer edge of the left foot down and lift up. So be where you need to be. There's lots of options here for you to decide which one to take. And then when you're ready, you're gonna bring that hand back down to plank, knees down, Walk it back one more time, child's pose. And if you see me being gentle on my right knee, I'm having some issues with my perineal nerve. So if I look a little clumsy today, getting in and out of postures, it's because I'm taking care of myself. So you, I expect you to take care of yourself. Be gentle. Breathe. So relax here for a moment in this forward fold. We're going to do one more back. Bend today. Breathe. And then as you're ready, start to come up. We're going to walk forward just to come onto our bellies. So back onto the belly. Taking the forearms parallel to the front of the mat. We're actually going to keep the right arm parallel to the mat. Toes are untucked, press down to the pubic bone. You can use your left hand to lift yourself up a little bit. Bend your left knee, bringing that heel towards the glute. See if you can reach back and grab that foot. So this is another place where you could use a strap. If you don't have one with you today, you can just reach towards the foot. That's way back there, okay? So maybe breathe. If you get a toe cramp here, you can always release. 
stretch in the front, the iliopsoas. You're working on that quite a bit. When we come into back bends, we, we're, we not only want to work to open the back, but also the front body. So we're going to switch it out. Left forearm is parallel to the front of the mat. Bend the right knee, bringing the heel towards your glute. You can use that right hand to cheat a little bit to press down to open you up and see if you can grab that foot. But make sure you're not rolling over and bringing this hip way up. Okay, or if you do, bring it back down as you grab that foot and just face forward. Yeah, stretch in the front of the right thigh. Breathe, and also the shoulder if your fingers are forward. So if you're reaching back this way, you don't get quite as much of the stretch in the shoulder. But it's still there. And then gently let go. Go ahead and stack your hands. Rest your forehead for a moment. Let your body rest. And then we're going to go ahead, and you can do what we just did, and you can do one side and then the other. Or if you feel okay with doing both together, we're going to go ahead and bend both knees. You can remember the cobra we did earlier with the hands under the shoulders. You can press down and lift up, and you could just stay here. Or once you get that little bit of lift in the front body, see if you can grab your feet. Press down through your pubic bone. Lift up, if you can grab the ankles coming into bow pose, breathe and lift up. You might rock. Lift the heart, lift the chest, lift the feet, press the feet into the hands. One more breath. And exhale, release. Stack the hands, rest your head, wiggle it out. <sighs> And then as you feel ready, we're just going to go ahead and come onto our backs. So I didn't say this in the beginning of the class, but if you have a wall nearby that you can practice by, bring your uh, mat over to the wall. If you don't, no worries. I'm gonna, I'll give you another option. Find the blanket that we folded. Remember I said we're gonna begin and end in a restorative posture. We will also do a short Shavasana. It's morning time, so we don't wanna lay down for another 10 minutes and go back to sleep, right? We just kinda of did all that energy work. You're gonna bring that folded blanket right in front of the wall. And depending on the size of your hips, because we're gonna end up in a moment sitting on this blanket um, and then turning to bring the legs up the wall. So I'm actually going to adjust my camera a little bit so you can see better. Um, so if your hips are wider, maybe you take your blanket and you just take one fold and sit on it. That's always an option. So you'll see we'll do this with bolsters too. Again, that's a little bit more um, just like our fish pose in the beginning of class. I don't want to do it quite as intense. We're going to back off a little bit. So come to sit on your blanket. My right hip is right against the wall. There's no space there. And the blanket is just to give the pelvis a little forearms. Start to take my legs up the wall and turn to face the wall. It's a little bit ungraceful getting into it and you might have to lift the hips up a little bit. So again, there's no space between my butt and the, the wall. It's right up against there. And then just taking my legs up, the wall is gonna support them. Again, anti-gravity, right? Letting the flow of the blood, the lip coming back. We stand all day. So we're just gonna let the legs and the feet have a rest. Of course, this is a great way to end your day, but we're gonna end our practice this morning this way. Now, if you don't have the wall, those of you that are at the wall, go ahead and stay there. You'll notice that the pelvis is lifted up a little bit. So again, this is um, getting the pelvis higher than the heart. Technically, this is an inversion. 
if you don't have a wall, you could take that blanket, because I didn't say to have a block, and you could also use a block if you have one, and just sit on it, come back on your back, and just take the legs straight up. So you have to do a little bit more work to hold the legs up. You don't have the nice wall supporting you, but that's okay, because it is morning, and it's okay for us to exert ourselves here let the arms fall to the sides or rest on your belly breathe And then as you're ready, draw the knees back into your chest. Bring the feet down to the floor. If you're by the wall, you're gonna press into the wall to push yourself back, give yourself space. You can lift the hips up and take that blanket out. Maybe you wanna use the blanket under your head. Before we come into Shavasana, we're just gonna take the knees both to the left, between the right arm out to the right. If your knees don't quite come down or they don't sit really well, you can take a, a block or you could take this blanket underneath the knees or between the knees, right? Make a little space there. Sometimes if you have low back or SI joint issues, it's really nice. Um, you might have had a doctor say sleep with a pillow between your knees. So if that's you, feel free to put that pillow in between. Keeping the, the hips a little bit more um, Symmetrical. And then go ahead and bring the knees back to center. You might want to recenter your hips or even shift the hips a little bit over to the left. To drop your knees to the right, my walls in the way, so I have to shift my whole body here. Bring the knees over to the right and let your left shoulder stay on the floor. If it wants to come up, encourage it to stay down. You can certainly look towards your fingers if that helps, or if that's not. And then bring the knees back to center, recenter your hips, and go ahead and stretch those legs out. Again, if you are comfortable with the blanket under your head for a pillow, or you might roll it and place it under your knees if your lower back needs a little bit more support, or if the hamstrings are tight. And find your shavasana. For some of you, that might mean keeping the knees bent. The feet as wide as the mat and just letting the knees fall together. So find what feels comfortable for you in a posture where you can, that's relatively symmetrical and where you can just totally relax the back body on the floor. And in fact, just as we did at the beginning, except that we don't have the blanket underneath of us anymore. Notice the points of contact between your body and the floor. 
And notice if one side feels particularly heavier than the other. Notice if anything has shifted or changed in the body. And notice your breath, chest. Notice if there is a lightness or an openness, perhaps more so than at the beginning. As you exhale, releasing, letting go. Letting go of tension. Breathing in fresh prana, energy, exhale, letting go of tension, and letting go of those last little bits of um, sloth from, from sleeping all night, the tamasic qualities. Each breath, notice if you feel a little lighter. Let the breath energize the body. Notice if the mind feels a little clearer. Become fully aware of the senses. Noticing the temperature of the air against your skin. Feel the rise and fall of your chest and your belly as you breathe. And leaving the you exhale. Notice any smells in the room, any sense of taste in the mouth. And notice the sounds in the room. If the eyes are closed, notice the sense of vision behind closed eyes. Perhaps the eyes at, at rest, noticing the weariness, right, from staring at screens all the time. And then let's actually go ahead and rub our hands together, create a little friction and a little bit of warmth and heat. And then place the hands over the eyes. Trusting the hands there for a few breaths. Inhaling the arms overhead as you feel ready. Start to walk the feet in, bend the knees, and transition to your side as you're ready. If you have a pillow or a blanket there, you might want to make it a little bit higher to accommodate the curve of your neck. And just rest here for a moment on your side. When you feel grounded and ready, and gently press down with your hands, start to walk your shoulders back and down, lift the sternum, bring the hands to the heart. Take a few breaths here. Notice how you feel. Mm. And keeping the thumb and the pinky together, opening the other fingers into a lotus. 
Breathe with the heart. And exhale and soften the heart. Let's inhale and reach the arms overhead. Exhale, palms together to the crown. Inhale, thumbs to the third eye. Exhale to the throat. And inhale to the sternum, to the heart. And exhale and bow forward. Honor yourself for taking this time for self-care. Freedom begins in the heart and in the mind. And when the mind is ruled by the heart. Thank you all for sharing this practice. Be well. Be loved. Namaste.